Hey, you're not funny. I don't like that last video you posted. You liked all my other videos. You, uh, commented on them. Well, those jokes were fine because they didn't pertain to me specifically. So you don't like this joke because you can relate to it. <laughs> yeah. So you're capable of laughing at the expense of others, just not yourself. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what is the point of this conversation? I need you to adjust your content to fit within the parameters of my sensitivity because I'm incapable of controlling my own emotions and I need you to do that for me. I'll still let you know whenever I'm upset because I have that privilege and it gives me this sense of self-righteousness that masks how mentally weak I am and the glaring fact that in the event of a zombie apocalypse, I would be the first to go. That's actually pretty accurate for very sensitive viewers. I mean, trust me. I don't know if if this is right or wrong about some sensitive political viewers they get so salty about things not because they're political and they not because they support the good cause it's just that they're really really sensitive and salty they're easy to offend and they have to find a way in order to try to criticize a certain person or a certain content creator and force them to adjust to what they want individually. And of course, if they're just going to say that, I don't like what you're doing, you, know, you should adjust your content creator for everyone. You are a content as a content creator for everyone. That kind of statement won't work. So what they do is that they put some kind of politics in it to mask the self-interest, to, to mask what they actually want. In other words, when they complain about your content and say that, say that everyone, every person has a different kind of level of sensitivity, different kind of, what should I say this, has a different levels of emotional, of emotional control, or should I say, um, emotional tolerance or resistance, or should I say, is that the right term? That's what they say. They're trying to support this idea of, of trying to make people adjust and understand and abide by that rule that every person has a different level of sensitivity. Don't get me wrong. I actually believe that every person has a different level of sensitivity. That is true. But if you're going to use that kind of politics in order to fuel your own personal or surface ag agenda of making people of making people or content creators adjust to what you want, even though what they did isn't really that bad or serious, it was just because you were offended over small things, just admit it. Say that you don't like it. But, and don't force people to adjust to what you want. You have to understand that they're content crazes. If they're doing nothing wrong and you were just offended because you didn't like what they're doing, just shut up. If they did bad, really, I mean serious bad, seriously bad, then I guess that's the point wherein you will have to put some politics in it and say that what he did is wrong or some more morality in it that that person that certain con creator did wrong. It's like what the video said. As an individual, if you have a very very low level of sensitivity, steer off from that kind of content. Just steer off. People, we as people should learn how to control our own emotions and our own way of thinking. So what if someone was depressed, someone has a mental illness? Those are special cases that require professional help. And I understand that these people couldn't win against their own, pro their own, what should I say, their own challenges as people with mental illness or mental disorders they can't win alone they need they need some people to rely on but if you're a 100 percent sorry a 100 percent healthy human being and you're going to force people to be responsible with your sensitivity for small reasons what the hell have you been doing all this time 
you basically killed your own potential of improvement. Wait, what's this? What's this? What is this? I know fake gameplay when I see one. Yeah, it does. It does look fake. Oh, I've seen this game. It's the Monkey King thing. We'll call Black Myth. It's actually really, really good. The demo looks good, but we shouldn't trust the demo. We shouldn't trust the trailer. It's my thing about game trailers or demos. We shouldn't assume that a demo is actually the real game. We shouldn't assume that every game demos or beta test or alpha test are the game are the actual game itself. We shouldn't assume immediately that what we see in the trailer is what the product really is. It's just another form of advertisement. Rather than we should think about trailers and game demos as a concept. So if you saw a trailer, a game, or a game demo in the internet, rather than saying that this game is what it looks to be, rather than thinking that this trailer or demo is the game, it is. No, it's just a concept for what the game will be. But, th but that doesn't assure anything that the actual game would live up to the demo or the trailer. It would either so the game would either be better than the trailer or the demo, or would be a much lesser product than what was showed in the trailer or the demo. So Black Myth Wukong, it does look good in the trailer and the demo. Or the demo, should I say? But there's no assurance that the final product would be the same. But from what I've heard, Black Myth Wukong was is under the development of Chinese Chinese game de of Chinese game developers. And we already know that Chinese game developers have been taking the gaming community by storm, especially especially Tencent. I mean look, what other I mean League of Legends? No, League of Legends was part of Riot Games. League of Legends was, was just bought by Tencent. Valorant. Valorant was made under when Riot Games was all Riot Games was already under the hands of Tencent. Genshin Impact. That's not a Japanese game or an American game. That's a Chinese game. So I I really have high expectations for Black Myth. Black Myth will call. Focus on combat and the martial arts. If that's real, I'm going to expect this to be a high quality Naruto uh, Naruto template. They're going to use a Naruto template, but with improved graphics with and with more. What should I say? This more attack patterns. The right rock. If this is the concept of Ragnarok, it's kind of a very average game, I should say. It's like Genshin Impact, but with more realistic, with more realistic graphics. Basically, you're just going to explore a world of Norse mythology. It 
does look like a mobile game trailer. Project Awakening. Wait, haven't we heard of this, like, for almost a decade now? I, just, I remember seeing this trailer back then. How long has it been when they started developing this? Oh, two years. I thought it was a decade. Of course not a decade. We don't have the machine to develop this kind of graphics, graphics back then. But three years ago, I remember watching the trailer. And I was really hyped up. The young me, when I was in high school, junior high school, I was really hyped when I saw this game, this trailer. And by the looks of it, the concept looks promising. People would say that this is a Monster Hunter kind of game, but for me, I think it's more of a what's that game again? Where you try when you're where your character is a small dude trying to kill giant monsters that are made of blocks and stones. It resembles this game to an extent. It resembles this game more than Monster Hunter did. Odin Valhalla Rising. Yeah, I know this. This is an MMORPG that was promised to us. For the vast world. Where are Jormung going? Wait, what? Really? So, this... so it's like Black Desert, but Viking. All without any loading time. So it's really like Black Desert. Black Desert almost had no loading time. When you're exploring the world. I was really looking forward to the Viking game. Because it resembles Black Desert a lot. Because I like Black Desert. The, the combat is really, really smooth. It was really good. But the only problem I have for Black Desert is that it's a... It's a total grind fest. The progression was unforgivable. Let's watch this. Who is Code Miko? Human friends, I am Kuboto, and welcome to my channel. Sorry, I cringed at that. Channel where I report on everything I've learned about your species. Today, my research has led me spiraling down one particular rabbit hole, driven by a single burning question. Okay, who is Code Miko? Code Miko is a just chatting streamer on Twitch. When in human form, she refers to herself as the technician. I am the technician for Code Miko. I Mill cap code Miko, I voice code Miko, I make code Miko, I do everything code Miko related. For people who are watching YouTubers, always remember this. Code Miko actually refers to his real self as a technician, and the actual virtual youth virtual content creator as Code Miko is referred to as a different kind of person. So basically, the real the creator of the virtual content creator or the VTuber is different from the actual VTuber that you see on screen. You should never assume that the creator and the virtual content creator are one, one thing. They're two separate personas. Basically, what Code Miko is trying to do here is that she's trying to separate her personal identity from the or from the what we call the mascot that she tries to portray in Twitch for her own reasons. But among most VTubers don't actually try to expose or show their real self. All they show is the persona or the avatar that they're trying to act on Twitch. 
so whenever you so for viewers out there who watch vtubers don't ask for a vtuber's personal image or personal information when they don't want to because that's not their job their job as a virtual entertainer is to be a vtuber and to only show the avatar that they're trying to show or the avatar that's doing all the content don't demand a face reveal that's it that's it when watching vtubers don't demand a face reveal unless they said that they will if they said they would do a face reveal then okay fine it's good but if they don't want to don't force them to they didn't they they did not sign up for the vtuber job to show their faces they signed up for this job to portray an avatar and make content surrounding that kind of avatar. Related. Miko, on the other hand, is the name of her 3D virtual avatar, Hello, which she controls using a motion capture suit and face tracking technology. Hold up, let me back up for a minute. It's actually good. Code Miko showing herself and the avatar, which is Miko, is kind of informative. At least we have a if you feel of what's actually be happening behind the camera. I didn't know how actually how VTubers actually do their job when doing their VTuber content. But seeing Code Miko do this kind of comparison, for example, when the avatar in her real self with all this black outfit and a headgear give us the idea of what feature the VTubers do behind the camera. Before streaming on Twitch, the technician had four years of experience doing research and development in live animation. After which, she started working on the Miko character in January of 2020. She even crafted a backstory where Miko is an NPC who wants to be in a AAA game but can't due to a glitch in her system. So she is left to wander through different game worlds. She started streaming around- Wait, really? It did, she did that? that's cool that's really really cool that's very it's very clever that's kind of backstory is really cool plus to a glitch in her system so she is left to i think she made a game around code miko which is actually cool as well if i think she should make a game around code miko or the miko character and i'm sure people would buy it wander through different game worlds she started streaming around april under the name miko glitch before switching over to code miko which was probably a good idea since searching for miko glitch today would have returned mixed results with this character um but miko is modeled in maya and textured in substance she then uses unreal engine to maya and what and what in substance she then uses I will take that. Uses Unreal Engine to create all the that. environments, animations, and wow. interactions. Basically, the whole thing is programmed to run like a game. She purchased an really. So it wasn't programmed to be a virtual VTuber. It was programmed to be a game, which makes a lot of sense. Why the, why her streams are high quality. Makes sense. MVN motion capture suit for around thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. And that's with a 50% independent developer discount. Wow. She uses the app Live Link Face on her iPhone to capture the facial tracking data and it feeds directly into Unreal Engine. And she does this all by herself, for the most part. And yes, she is a real female. I am a girl. Yeah, I'm a girl. Now, let's take a look at how all of this she did it all by herself. You could see actually the talent and the skill and the experience that she built over the years of doing her job in this video people would say that dr disrespects put so much effort in his streams and i think code miko does the same code miko actually put so much effort on her streams she's basically one of the most advanced vtubers out there okay before you weebs actually try to comment down and slap me for saying that you hate 3d women and you like 2d women only i'm sorry 
but I find 3D VTubers more advanced than 2D VTubers. That's just me. Within the context of the whole VTuber and virtual influencer landscape. Yep. Early I creators see that. like Ami Yamato and Kazuna AI, Kazuna AI, helped to popularize the idea of a virtual avatar. Yep, true. I tack I've said this in the in my Tales from the Bob episode where about virtual idols. Like KDA. It all started with Kizuna AI from what I what I see, okay? It all started with Kizuna AI. Just the most popular VTuber out there before all this VTuber trend came into existence was Kizuna AI. This paved the way for more developers, which brought in more content creators, which inspired even more development, and so on. Yep. Now, with free VTuber software readily available, coupled with minimal hardware and some design skills, anyone can dive right into becoming a VTuber. This past year alone, we've seen an explosive growth in popularity within the Western VTuber space. From so that's the reason why there's a really, really big population of VTubers in every platform right now because the software used for doing VTubers was made for was made free in the internet. It's actually very healthy in the content creator community. Meaning there's it I is okay sorry, the light went out again. The content was now diversified and open to people who actually want to try or turn this into a career. It's actually nice. A lot of people out there actually dislike VTubers because it's web shit, because it's weeb shit, but I think that's just a prejudice mentality because they just don't like anime. Independent artists and creators bringing all different types and flavors of personalities to VR enthusiasts, to massive VTuber talent agencies, they've all helped to prove and legit. They basically t went hip hop. The interest in both 2D and 3D virtual avatar content. So much so, in fact, that it even enticed non VTuber creators to give it a try. Yep, Why all of a you. sudden is it a problem about my looks? We have done hundreds of streams. Virtual influencers, on the other hand, are created with such high quality CGI work that it blurs the line between reality and fiction. Yep, true. Their interactions I've, with their. I've seen this night, night project actually tackle this virtual influencers thing. It's actually impressive. Audience is not as direct as that of VTubers, since their purpose is more about selling a lifestyle and working directly with other influencers and brands. So where does me the only problem I have with this is that we'll be having so much competition with people don't that don't even exist. Hear me out, okay? We'll be having a big competition with people who are who are not existing in the plane of reality they're just virtual people and yet they do a better actually a better job than us who are real why because it's a virtual world you can do as much as anything you want in a virtual world the only limit is the limit of your imagination well here in the real world we can't we almost can't do that we need the we're going to need the the help of technology in order to do that through what do you say green screen is that the right thing to do i uh, right, right thing to say green screen and motion capture and a bunch of editing and not everyone and not everyone is actually gifted with the talent for editing videos creating 3d characters only a few set of people and these people are actually doing a better job than us all we do most streamers only do is place a fucking camera in front, do content, edit videos. In the, con in the context of streaming, all we do is play games, talk about things, and be as much entertaining as we can be. But v VTubers, they can do so much shit. They can do a lot of things. They're basically in a higher tier of content creators. Why? They could just create anything. They could just craft anything they want and show it in the video. It may be as absurd as it can be or as beautiful as it can be, but they can do almost anything in the virtual world. Go fit into all of this. Well, considering everything that she's developed, I would say she's probably... But that's an example. That's an example of what they can actually achieve. 
if you want to enlarge your head, you can do that in the virtual world. In the real world, it's like you want a hydrocephalus to implant in your fucking head before you can do that. They can just create any guns in the virtual world, and they could actually use virtual guns to shoot people without getting banned. Why? Because the people they shoot, they shoot, are not even real. If we do that in real life, we'll get banned and thrown into the jail immediately. If creators, that doesn't even have a name yet. And I'm not just talking about the 3D technology. AI Angel is another example yes, of a creator. Yes, people are forgetting the fact about AI Angel. Before, before I knew Code Miko, I stumbled upon AI Angel first. And in my opinion, she's also one of the most advanced virtual, virtual YouTubers out there. If you haven't seen AI Angel out there, you should go check, go check her channel. It's really, really good. Trust me, she's funny. Who uses motion capture technology for her content? But beyond the this clip of AI of a Angel Angel AI Angel AI is the clip before ray tracing came. This is the clip. This is the clip before the RTX the RTX 30 series came out. It's when RTX 30 series came out. Her graphics and physics improved a lot. Content. But beyond the tech, what really makes Miko and the technician unique is her ability to tell a bigger story. And I think this is where true. That's actually true. You really get to see Code Miko's strengths. Unlike VTubers who use anonymity to help their character and personality shine, Code Miko's personality is a blend of two worlds. Yep. Literally. In the virtual world, Miko invites guests on for interviews. From a bunch of credit cards that you're getting screwed on. Hi, little. Like a little baby bird in its nest. That's so cute. She can change into different outfits and skins and can summon. And that's one thing that beach hoovers can do that we can't. They can change into another outfit in an instant. In a fucking instant. We, we as people, if we want to change outfit on stream, we need to go out and select. And select this very, very virtual thing. Choose one outfit in the fucking drawer, get it, and change outfit in, this, in, the, comp in the bathroom or the comfort room, if you want to say, and it come out after. It would take a few minutes before we could actually change to another outfit. What code we could just slap her fingers and then turn into something else. Props. <laughs> That's with 7, Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure that all the resources that he, that Code Miko used here on her streams were made in a very long in a should I, how much in a, maybe a very long period of time to perfect all these resources to be used on stream. I know it. It has hard work in there. It's not that she bought. It's not that she bought it on the internet and have someone made it. Make it for. Her. I'm pretty sure she made all of this herself. I don't know why they would. That's what I'm saying. Okay, did they ever get bodies all over the floor? No, that's your imagination. She creates ways for her chat to interact directly with the stream, like polls, donation-related animations, and even allows chat to modify Miko herself. Wait, really? She gave chat that power? No, that's actually fun. Now you can just wait for chat to create the most hilarious abominations they had in their own imaginations. And we already knew what what's the first thing that we try to enlarge. And you can see that on this clip. She can create any type of world she wants using Unreal Steel Engine. Sir. Yep. That's one thing that we also have to remember. She can create her own world. I have game functions like this, and I can move around the world. And one day, she wants to build an RPG. And that's actually very clever in general. Most of the time, VTubers don't give us the privilege or the honor to explore the world that they live in because they can't. Code Miko, all she did was program her character, her software in a gaming template so that 
she could just move around on her own world in her world and show us the world she lives in. World complete with bosses. Give it enough time or years, she could make an entire fucking city. And then she would give us a tour in that virtual city. Virtual city that she built. Then game animations. So Miko's virtual world is filled with unlimited possibilities, which will creatively exactly. inspire. Um. Oh, we can't say that word. In the real world, the technicians. Okay, he's a simple man. Content can be more down to earth, personal, and informative. And you are super supportive of my Miko stuff. She might talk about her goals and ambitions. I am a game dev at the end of the day, and I would I'd rather people talk about like her interactivity and the actual stream than oh, she's got fancy or share development progress and ideas. The amount of propulsion part, okay, so the, the amount of propulsion that the fart will project will determine amount like the amount of bits. Basically, if I, I can call anyone in my real phone and her VR phone will actually call as well. Sometimes she might even call her real boyfriend during the stream. Tell oh, chat, this was one of the <laughs> most clippable men. Uh, yes, I am a real boyfriend. That clip was actually the largest, by the way. Brandon, what is this troll? <laughs> These are all the different ways her content gives you an insight into who she is, and more interestingly, how she thinks. Like that whole dynamic is gonna be an inverse kinematic thing. Like your mocap is an FK, it's a forward kinematic, but that whole thing is an inverse kinematic, and that's just anyway. Mini must. It is this combination of both worlds: the character, the person, the expertise, the passion, the humor. <laughs> that really defines Code Miko. And seeing her rise and evolution gives us a glimpse into what the future of virtual content and live production can become. Where the streamer and the audience are brought closer than ever before. Much like the Ami Yamatos and Kazuna Eyes, the Code Mikos of today will undoubtedly... Okay, that's the end of it. We don't have anything to watch here, but she's really... She's just trying to explain more things. So I'm going to show you who Angel, AI Angel is. She's actually, she's actually, she's still small. I don't think she's small. It's she's part of the higher percentage of YouTubers with so much with a higher amount of higher numbers of subscribers. So this is what AI Angel actually looks like right now. This is when RTX came. I haven't watched some of her content yet. But I'm just going to show you a glimpse. Area. Basically, this is how your map starts, and this is what mine looks like. Her graphics and visuals are almost as close as the Code Miko. The only thing that Code Miko has more than AI Angel is the it's the lore, and then the ability to explore the world, or should I say, her own room, in with with the use of game functions. If you want to watch her? Go subscribe and watch.